Hey there, in this video, we'll learn how smooth cameras can be created and we'll implement panning and zooming as well. So what is a camera? By default, if you run a game, the whole room will be visible. But in some games, you need to create a bigger room that has your whole world and you only want a part of that room to be visible. So for that, we can use cameras. So now let's see how a smooth camera can be created. On a side note, you should know that you don't need to use a matrix for a 2D camera. They're supposed to be used for 3D games and making a 2D camera like this will only make things more complicated. So let's get to it. Here I have a basic project with a player placed in a big room. As you can see, without a camera, the whole room is visible and the player looks really small. So let's implement a camera. I'll start by creating a new object called O camera. I'll place it in the room. Now in the object, I'll add the create event. Here I'll add this. Here I'm initializing some macros. A macro is basically a global constant value that can't be changed. Since this is the camera's base size, it's not something I need to change and I also need it to be global. So I always use macros for this. So this is the camera's width, this is the height and this is the scale. So if you set the scale to 2, the window will be 2 times larger than the camera itself. So for now, the window will be the same size as the camera. And this is how smooth the camera is. So the lower this value, the smoother and slower the camera will be. Increasing this value will make the camera quicker and snappier. Now here I'm setting view enable to true to enable views which are required for cameras and setting the first view, view 0 to be visible. Now we need to create the camera. This function creates a camera and returns its ID. So I'm gonna create a camera at 0 by 0 in the room and use the size in my macros. I'll store its ID in this variable. And this function will set our camera to view 0. Now we need to resize the window and set the resolution. So the window size will be set to the camera size multiplied by the scale. The same size will be applied to the application surface. This is basically the resolution of the game. Now the GUI layer size will be set to the camera size. The GUI layer is where the draw GUI event draws everything. So if you're gonna draw your heart there, you need to make sure that it's the same size as the camera. Now we've created the camera and resized the window. Now the issue is that if you run the game, the window will not be in the center. So this code will center the window. This gets the width and height of the display and this gets the width and height of the window. Then this sets the position of the window by subtracting half the window size from half the display size. Now we need to smoothly move the camera towards the player. So I'll add the end step event. We'll be using this event because it runs after the step event where all the movement takes place. So here I'll add this. This gets the current x and y position of the camera. And this gets the target position of the camera which is where the player is. So it's half the camera size subtracted from the player's position so that the player is in the center of the camera. Now we need to make sure that the camera doesn't go outside the room. So we're going to limit its value using the clamp function. This function limits a value to a minimum and a maximum. So the target position will be limited to a minimum of 0 and a maximum of the room size minus the camera size. So now we have the current camera position and the target camera position. Now we need to smoothly move the camera from its current position to the target position. So the lerp function will move cam x towards target x by this percentage. Since this is 0.1, which is 10% as a percentage, each step the current camera position will move 10% towards the target. Then this function will apply the new position to the camera. Now I'll run the game and move around. You can see that the camera smoothly follows the player. But the player also looks really small since it's a pixel art game. So the camera needs to be zoomed in. So I'll go to O camera's create event. So I'll change the resolution to 320 by 180 and the scale to 3. Now I'll run the game and you can see that the camera is zoomed in and it looks a lot better. Now we'll implement panning. I'll open our camera's create event. At the end I'll add this. These variables will store the mouse coordinates for the previous step so that we could calculate how much the mouse has moved. And for the mouse coordinates, we'll be using the device mouse to GUI functions which get the mouse position on the GUI layer. If you just use the mouse x and mouse y variables, they'll cause problems because they are the mouse coordinates inside the room and they'll keep changing when you pan the camera. So instead we use the GUI coordinates because the GUI layer doesn't move. Now I'll open the end step event. After getting the current camera position, I'll add this. This code handles the panning. 
If the middle mouse button is held, this will get the difference between the current mouse position and the previous mouse position. So basically it will get how much the mouse has moved. Those values will be subtracted from the camera position so that the camera moves the other way. Now I'll add an else block here to follow our if condition. Then I'll add the rest of the code inside it except the last line. This way the camera will not try to move towards the player object while the user is panning. Then at the end I'll add this. So this will store the mouse coordinates into the previous variables so that they could be used in the next step. Now I'll run the game and I'm able to pan around with my middle mouse button. Now let's implement zooming. After getting the camera's position, I'll get the camera's width and height as well. Then I'll replace all the occurrences of the width and height macros with the new width and height variables. I'm doing that because zooming will change the size of the camera and so we'll need to use the new size. Now at the end, I'll apply the size variables to the camera. And before that, I'll add this. This function returns 1 if the mouse wheel is moved down and this one returns 1 if the mouse wheel is moved up. So this variable will get 1 if the wheel is going down and minus 1 if it's going up. This checks whether the wheel variable is not 0 which means that it's being used. Here I'm multiplying the wheel variable with 0.1 so that the zooming isn't too fast. Now these variables will store how many pixels will be added to the camera size by multiplying the wheel value with the size. So if you're zooming in this value will be negative because the camera size will need to be reduced. Then those values are added to the camera's width and height. We also need to adjust the camera's position so that it zooms from the center. So half the added values will be subtracted from the camera's position. Now I'll run the game. And as you can see, I'm able to zoom in and out. Thanks for watching and I really hope it helped you. Check out my other tutorials and Udemy courses here and you can subscribe here to catch my future videos. So I'll see you in the next one.